So, um, mate, thanks for coming down. So, welcome back to Adventure Radio. We're sitting here with James Harding. Uh, James has come down to, uh, to visit and talk about his life. He's uh, just released a book called Hard Cuddles. And, uh, and, and it's fair to say he's lived a, a pretty, pretty interesting <laughs> life thus far. So, uh, I'm keen to hear all about it. So, James, why don't you tell us a little bit about, you know, who you are, where you came from, your background, so forth. Yeah, so very normal upbringing. Really solid family, um, solid education, but I, um, I've always been very curious, mm-hmm. and um, you know, I was involved in a couple of um, really violent incidences when I was young. I was attacked by a dog, and a mate of mine and I were walking home from a party, and um, we were attacked with. Um, Swords. Swords. Well, I wasn't. He was. I sort of got out of the way. And, and, um, yeah, there was lots of – both incidents involved lots of blood and guts. Yeah. So with the dog attack, I had my calf ripped off. You know, I was only nine. And so I sort of, you know, steeled myself and thought maybe this is going to be a consistent theme with a young (laughs) young mind. And, um, yeah, I felt a lot of fear – both times and I thought to myself it's not really something I want to be feeling mm-hmm. so I, was, I went on the counter attack and um, I sort of started planning when I was 15 that when I was big enough and scary enough um, you know I was going to be intimidating and mm-hmm. um, well, you're I, nearly there now mate mm-hmm. if you grow a few more inches and a uh, <laughs> couple, couple bigger frown on your face you might get yeah. there <laughs> yeah well, I had the frown <laughs> But yeah, no, I, so I just, I, I sort of, yeah, I wanted to, I didn't want to feel the fear anymore. I didn't want mm-hmm. to feel like a scared kid and planned. And, you know, I left school. Um, everyone was worried about TERs and um, going to a uni. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be a gangster. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I, look, I fell into a couple of jobs and sales rep and was number one sales rep in Australia illegally at 17. Mm hmm. And um, always had access and was able to generate huge amount, huge amount, huge amounts of money. Sorry, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, um, sort of fell out of a carpentry apprenticeship. Didn't like it, and then started rocking and rolling in the criminal world in in Melbourne, and uh, did a five year apprenticeship mm. there, which mm-hmm. was um, it was wild and willing and dangerous and and, and adventurous and yeah. So, okay, so you obviously, as you said, you had it in your mind anyway. My initial thought before this interview was, you know, where did it go wrong? Was it, it was, or, or was it, you know, tough childhood? Or, or, but you'd kind of decided that you wanted to be, to be yeah. tough and, and so forth in your, in your head. So, so what, when was the first time that you started to act in that, you know? Where was the tipping point where you were like sales rep, Trying to be a, a carpenter, and then you're like, "No, nah, I'm going to give this, you know, yeah, this underworld um, stuff a go." Yeah, I always sort of fantasised about the idea growing up, and you know, I'd read lots of books, and I went to primary school with um, some pretty serious people, mm-hmm. with their dads and grandfathers, and and my best mate was a an Albanian, yep. so I always sort of had. At, a, at my disposal. Wait, wait. Let's just pause there. Is yeah. that a is that a um, is that a racist uh, Albanian? Uh, no, <laughs> you're like, no, you've, no. You've just covered all Albanians. As, well, no. it was obviously a gangster. It was I, Albanian. No, no. I got a, a Albanian and people. I, I mean, I've spent a lot of time with them, and they're they're amazing people. <laughs> yeah. I will say they're very very serious people too. Yeah, if you right. don't do the wrong thing by them. All right, all right. So we needed um, some ba- we need some uh, we need some context. To that, uh, yeah. that one, I reckon. Yeah, so, um, yeah, and they, and they don't muck around and I yeah. love that. Yeah. I love that black and white attitude and, um, yeah, we sort of all had – we had um, we had the, the resources at our disposal and by sort of 19 and 20, you know, you, I was filling out as a, as a, as a man and um, you start testing what you're capable of, seeing where your limits are and challenging people and challenging yourself and – challenging that fear that i felt mm-hmm. i would um i thought by getting on the front foot that i would be able to erase it 
But um, as I was later to work out with any emotional problem, you can't, it's never going away. Mm. You have to actually do some work and understand what sort of impact that had on you. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I was, you know, it, it, it crept so slowly. It just started small. It was drug distribution and collection and, and then, um, you know, when, you, when you're in that world, lots of different opportunities and people present themselves mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, look, if it fell, but fell within my um, limitations, I'd, I'd take it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, it's funny really, isn't it? I mean, you say there's opportunities that, that pop up when you're coming up as a, as a young kid. I grew up on the Moines Peninsula and, and it's a pretty friendly place, but there was definitely lots of drugs going around. There were some heavy dudes and, and I started taking drugs super early and I can look back now and I can probably pinpoint a few decisions that I made in the no column that if I had have gone in the yes column could have got me a fair bit deeper. Like I'd sold drugs and taken all the drugs under the, yep. un, un, under the sun and you know, things of that nature. And as a young kid, you know, coming up and, and growing up, I suppose it's that you don't really think of the, the gravity, you know, behind your decisions to mm. take the, the, the blue pill or the red pill, yeah. but, but one or two steps in one direction and you can be, you can be right in there and I could see, I could see how that'd be. Yeah. So, so where did it go for you? So you were, you started off, you know, in like you said, in the, in the drug drug stuff, and then hanging around the wrong kind of people. But like, what did it what did it escalate to? Like, where did it? Yeah. So the the end result, I mean, cutting through all the all the partying and women and 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 activity, all the good stuff, all the <laughs> and it was fun. Like that's so <laughs> yeah. addictive. Yeah. And the power more than anything, being able to do what you want. Yeah. Um. You know pockets full of cash and mm -hmm. you're only young but um it got real when i took a large consignment of mdma and i was partying with a, what i call the tour set and they, they've got cash to burn mm. i was only 21 20 no i was about 23 sorry I, I, I made a mistake and there's this fella um yeah he's he's um he's put two people off that i know of mm -hmm. and um yeah, I took the consignment off him and I knew how serious he was because I knew his reputation and um, I covered most of the money but um, I was short a bit and uh, I was called to a meeting in a big mansion in um, Malvern and I knew it wasn't for um, tea and assorted creams. You mm -hmm. know, there was um, – he kept adjusting something in his sock on the way there and I was thinking, I wonder what that is. Well <laughs> – <laughs> I was soon to find out. Anyway, we went, I went there and there were three guys in there. They were supposed to uh, give me a touch-up, but, um, you know, I didn't go down, mm -hmm. which was a mistake. And um, so he pulled out the shooter that was in his sock and smashed me in the forehead, which mm -hmm. is the scar there, mm -hmm. and uh, split me open like a watermelon. And again, blood and guts and, um, yeah, he ended up putting his uh, shooter in my mouth and when my teeth bit down on the steel... And you've got a, a murderer on the other end that's on ice. I'm thinking, yeah, this is very real. And um, they asked me to give up names and people and I, I didn't and earned their respect, which is just so strange. Yeah. Because that's what I'd always search for, the respect of heavy dudes. And yeah. then when I got it, I was like, I don't really want to be here anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so I got out, squared up the cash. Um, not long after that, I mean, I always had a safe full of drugs and cash and I started campaigning early one day. Was, I, I didn't want to kill myself, but it was – I just – I didn't care. Mm. So I launched into it early in the morning, um, drinking as well, and then by – I think it was about 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock that night, I was a mess. Mm -hmm. And Then I remember looking at this um, – huge pile of ketamine that, that was there pure and i just demolished it mm -hmm. and uh continued to throw up for 12 hours but at one point it got really dark and i remember lying on my bed on my stomach looking at the doorway and um it started to go dark and i thought to myself i could be off here mm. and this dark entity appeared um and i'm still not sure whether i was hallucinating because it was ketamine but um mm -hmm. It just waved its finger at me as if to say, it's not your turn. Mm -hmm. And I put an emergency prayer um, express posted upstairs <laughs> to whoever's up there, yeah. right? And yeah. I said, if you get me out of this, 
I'll spend the rest of my life um, helping people in similar positions. So here I am. It, it, there's more to it. Like it took me 10 years of healing to get to this point, mm-hmm. even after I'd made that decision. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, the funniest thing is, Bill, mate, my childhood was always revolved around the salt water, spear fishing, surfing. Mm-hmm. Um, Holidays with the family. Like a good childhood. Yeah. Mm. And during those five years I was doing my apprenticeship crash course in Melbourne's criminal world, I didn't go in the salt water once. Mm. So after that incident with the the drug overdose, um, I made the call to move up the coast. Mm-hmm. I just knew intuitively or instinctively I knew where I had to go because we'd always holidayed in Marimbula. Mm-hmm. And I knew I just had to get there. Yeah, right. Um, so like a calling, like I was just calling you to yeah, that's where you needed to I be. I knew. I yeah, knew no, I needed sure. to be there. And, um, you know, Dad, I was 77. It, it always makes me emotional, this bit. I was 77 kilos. Mm. I'm 106 now. Mm. And as I as we drove over the border, I remember Dad followed me um, taking some of my other things. I remember just being overwhelmed with relief, mm-hmm. not that anyone was chasing me. I yeah. just felt free. Yeah. And as we drove down past the airport at Marimbula, which is on the left, and we're hitting the town, I remember I remember punching the air, and mm. I knew Dad could see it. Mm. I was just so overwhelmed that I knew I was going to heal mm. there, and um, I was spot on, mate. Yeah. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for sharing that, mate. It's not obviously, uh, you know, it doesn't sound like an easy thing to. To talk about, and um, but I mean, there's lots of good that has obviously come from it because you're here now, and you know, like you said, five kids, and mm. you know, 106 kilograms. You look a lot better now than you probably did at 70, 76. Yeah, yeah. So it'd be fair to say. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, well, that's great. Um, it's a. I feel like. Um, I feel like uh, one thing that you mentioned in that in that story there was um, was the the impact of like when you were coming up and you had that that feeling of power yeah i feel like um i feel like you know when you're trapped in that world i feel like because i've got a lot of mates that have sold drugs and i not, not not you know i probably don't know anyone to the to the level of the guys that you probably were kicking around with i would, yep. I would imagine um but but in, in saying that you know i had i had a mate that sold sold coke for probably 12 years yep and and at one point it got to that, and he's a smart guy, yeah. You know, he's a smart guy, and he didn't need any more money. He wasn't he wasn't Pablo Escobar rich, but he also he didn't need really to keep selling coke to 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 make more money. He was blowing all the money anyway. Yeah. And the money that he did have, he it got to the point where he was he was buried in his um, in his parents' backyard in his mum and yep. dad's backyard, the yep. safest safest place he could find it. I'm like, mate, listen to what you fucking tell. We were talking yeah. over a beer one. Night. I said, listen to what you fucking telling me. Yeah. And, and he's a smart enough guy to, to understand. But he said to me one day, I can't remember exactly how he verbalized it, but he said, um, he said he's like, mate, I just I just love the power of not having to fucking care about anything, not not yeah. giving a fuck, you know, money for anything, and and that. That that power that you're the man. Yeah. You know, you're the man when you walk into a room. If you're at a party, if you're at a party and you're at, if you're around the right crew, obviously, you're not going to walk in any room and they're, you know, but you walk into the rooms that you're probably circling around in and you, you're the fucking, you're, you're the center of attention. You're, yeah. you're the guy that everyone wants to know. Yeah. Um, absolutely. You, you know, I feel like that. Do you reckon when you were, when you were going through it or when you were in the, in the thick of it, do you reckon that, that, that was a big part of it? Yeah, absolutely, Bill. You're spot on, and I can totally relate to what your your mate was talking about with the with the dog attack. The when we were and then we were attacked coming home from the party. The when I was pistol whipped. Mm-hmm. What I noticed from those three moments is I was a hundred percent present and mm-hmm. conscious, mm-hmm. and that's a rare feeling. Most people are caught addicted to chatter or their thoughts, yeah. mind thoughts, and that's the that was those times. I realised you could separate yourself from your mind. Now, yep. that was the most addictive thing. Now, yeah. with that world, doing a, a, something huge like a big deal or um, or being involved in any sort of high really stakes, s- high stakes yep. Yep. you're really present. Yeah. And what I realised is even more so than the feeling of, I mean, you're um, 
you're like the fastest gun in the West when mm. you're living in that world. No rules apply to you and that's mm-hmm. addictive. But being present and the adrenaline, mm. I found that more addictive than any drug. Mm. And wow. now I didn't realise you could get that legally. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I didn't realise yeah. you could get that. Yeah, no. You know, I now know they've got, saying. what's that place called? Um, adre- Adrenaline.com. And all oh, yeah. I didn't realise you could You're just on there all day, every day. What yeah. can I do next? What yeah, can I do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, the power, it's a spin out, mate. Like, I, look, I was so ego driven. It's yeah. just wild. 100%. Um, funny you say about that being present thing because um, there's a few things on that, I reckon, because... I've, I've listened to. Have you ever listened to Jocko Willink talk? You're the third person that's told me I needed yeah. to listen to it. Yeah, to him. I think you. Would, I think you would enjoy him. He's yep. just. He's just speaks truth. You know, speaks really honestly. And and and. Uh, so he was a. Yeah, he was a. Um, he was a high-ranking military man. You yep. know? Um And basically, leader of men, and so on and so forth. And he talks a lot about the fact that. When he was in Iraq, going through their worst tour, when they lost the most, the most men, and he lost the, the most friends that he'd ever lost on a tour, and so forth, like that exact thing. He talks about that, you know, PTSD is bad for for um, soldiers and and so forth. But the the actual aside from all the horrific things that they've seen, the coming back into society where everything's safe yeah. and normal and 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 dull and boring yeah. is the hardest part you know yeah. probably the same as like I would hate to be for the same reason I would hate to be Michael Jordan right now you yeah. know like I would have loved to be Michael Jordan for yeah. about 30 years there till yeah. about the age 37 and then once you're not Michael Jordan anymore like Michael Jordan's I read an interesting article talking about Michael Jordan and how he's just a grumpy old bastard now yeah he really? is really yeah yeah apparently he's not a, not a fun person to hang I've around I've heard that yeah I have and, heard uh, that and it, but and it was a, quite a sad article it didn't it didn't really you know, shit all over him or anything like that. But it was just interesting to talk about the fact that imagine how you would feel if you went from, you know, from a god that was always on high pressure situations, so on and so forth, to the go to man. Yeah, yeah, to to to, to not, and, and I could see that that would be hard. Yeah, and it, you know, mate, like there's so much work I had to do on myself, uh, emotional work, but. That world, I I had this grandiose idea, right, I'm pulling the pin and that's it. The residual stuff that lingered, I mean, it was just horrendous and I felt like I couldn't avoid it. You go to pubs or you'd go somewhere. My missus is a, my wife's a straightie. Mm. You go to pubs, they'd shut the pub, free drinks, or you go to a restaurant, you could discount discount yeah. on a free meal and she's going, what's, what, what's all this? <laughs> and I tried to explain to her. I don't think she believed me. Like, how do you say, <laughs> yeah. explain that without sounding like a, a full-blown idiot? <laughs> yeah. And then we're at an underworld yeah. funeral and she's um, she's standing next to Big Mick uh, and, uh, you know, her eyes were just... <laughs> she could have killed me that particular day. So so you so you met up, you started seeing your missus when you were still heavily, heavily no, involved? No, right, right, I'd cleaned myself right up. Oh, yeah, but you still, you still had... It lingers. Lit. Yeah, yeah. Even now, it yeah. still lingers yeah. to this day, you know. Yeah, I feel like a big wig to sit next to you. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's interesting. So where do you reckon, um, where do you reckon that happens for all the guys that you're kicking around? Like, yep. where do you reckon, where do you reckon they're tipping point was you know like what why why do so many young kids take that path that that goes you know to a yeah. life of drugs and crime and, and, and yeah. whatever yeah great question bill um so the all these people that i knocked around with when i realized i wanted to work with people they fascinated me their reputations and how they could be so violent mm-hmm. so i dug and I've had this gift of being able to get people to talk. Mm-hmm. And these guys would explain their upbringings and stories. And when you hear what's happened to them as kids, you it, it makes sense why yeah. they're the way they are because yeah. no one's born that way, mate. Yeah. They're, they're created. Yeah. And it's usually traumatic childhood. The old man wasn't there. If he was there, he was clipping them regularly. Mm. Uh, they've grown up around drug abuse. And it all, like even, for example, Chopper Reed, the real story of his background is horrific. Yeah. So you got this bloke, you see, everyone sees the end product, this grotesque, it's like a car accident. You look at it and you're like, wow, how intriguing. But the real story of him when he was a child and getting sent to mental asylums and shock therapy and mm. being diagnosed, 
his mum was a Seventh Day Adventist and thought he was the devil. And <laughs> when you hear, you think, yeah, well, I get it. That makes perfect sense. I get it, yeah. and that's for me when when I realised this was a consistent theme with men and emotion, not being able to talk, and me knowing I could get men to talk. I mm-hmm. thought to myself, I didn't never got, I didn't get pinched for anything. And it's not that I was some master criminal. I wasn't big by any stretch of the imagination. But I feel there's a reason why I didn't get pinched. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, I've got to give back. I had to go through it, understand it, give back and do something about it. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so thankful that I've got a missus that will back me. Mm. I mean, my missus will follow me to hell and fight the devil for me. She's so <laughs> staunch and she's a straighty <laughs> from a good school, mate. You know what I mean? I look for, uh, a, I look for a running partner all my life uh, in blokes and, you know, I'd, I'd never really found an equal. Yeah. And then I find an equal in my wife who went to the best, pub, uh, best school in Melbourne mm-hmm. from an amazing family and doesn't know that world, but she's mm-hmm. more rock solid than anyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, that's great. All right. So let's go. Let's fast forward back to, to Marimula and, yep. and we'll talk about, obviously, I want to know, like, what, you know, what, what you're doing now and, yeah. and so forth. But, but when, you know, when did you start to see the light? When did you start to be like, okay, cool? I mean, like you said, getting in the ocean, did you have some sort of a, you know, fitness routine, like getting in the water? Like, what got you from that period of you've left the kind of the world you're in? You got that, that period where you were kind of trying to reshape yourself. How did that all? How did that all? Yeah. Work out? So I knew moving up with country people, you can't behave like a wanker <laughs> because you are hundred percent accountable up there, right? <laughs> yeah. And the whole everyone town, knows everyone, everyone knows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and I did that on purpose. And they one got you know one thing leads to another. But I was always very observant of lessons. And a bloke up the road said, "Listen, I'll get you a job if you come and play centre half forward." At Marimula Diggers, and mm-hmm. I'm thinking I'm 77 kilos. The only physical exercise I'd done was at the dance floor at 161, yeah, or revolver, yeah. And you would have done some serious work oh, there. Oh, serious, <laughs> serious. You were 77 yeah. and fit, yeah, yeah, a real after dance dark fit. operator, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I got it done. Um, you know, had a few games, good games where I dominated, and. I just sort of fell into the lifestyle and then when I started playing footy and training, then I started doing recovery in the salt water and swimming and fishing and um, everything surrounded the salt water, spear fishing and mm-hmm. the breathing from spear fishing, you know, regulates your emotions and everything became about salt water again. Yeah, right. And that's – I know there's a scientific explanation for mm-hmm. why salt water makes people feel better. I just don't enter into it. I just know it makes me feel good, mm-hmm. so I need to be in there every day. And I mean, I grew up. Uh, sorry, woke up in the morning. And I could see the Marimbula Lake as soon as I opened my eyes in my bed. Yep. And I was surrounded by salt water, and I really started to put on weight, train, heal, be mm-hmm. around c- country people. I started to trust them, and I trusted myself. And the real James um, came to fruition, mate. Mm, that's great. Yeah, I I, um, I totally agree with you on the salt water thing as well. It's, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, because I grew up I grew up St Andrews Beach out the back of Rye Rye, yep. Rye Back Beach, um, and I grew up literally our driveway was five hundred meters went on back onto the back of June's golf course. Yep, um, and then the the entry point to the back beach is like a five hundred meter drive to the water. Yeah, uh, but basically we were di- directly across the road. Yeah, you know, so effectively, if I'm walking, it, it's about a kilometer. But we were across the road, and I grew up surfing and and just being down the beach. It was like my happy place, you know. And so I I, I moved up to the city. I lived in South Melbourne, and that was cool. Really loved it. Now I live in Port Melbourne, and it's such a Port Melbourne. I live literally. 50 60 meters maybe to the actual sand to the water water's edge and beautiful i don't get down there so much in winter i, I know i should and i would i have a cold shower in the morning which so, i really <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mate, i still have Sorry. a cold shower in the morning Is there Can I give in the room, I think. <laughs> yeah. um, mate you're actually 100 bang on there i am soft but um you've you've, you've picked me pretty pretty quickly there <laughs> but um but when it starts to warm up, because I'm a yeah. fair weather, I'm a fair weather player yeah. here. Um, You'll when be it does strutting up and down like <laughs> yeah, a peacock, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. When I, when I, but I, but when I, um, when the weather's nice, every day if I come home from work, no matter what time it is, you mm. know, it might be eight pm and a bit overcast or whatever, and I just jump in the water because yeah. it actually makes me feel like a bit of a. I feel like a bit of an emotional 
reset. Yeah. Mental reset. Not not a, yeah. maybe not emotional, but mental a- anything, whatever. Like you get yeah. you fully and it's different to if you go up to your hips or if you have a shower or what any other form, if you fully immerse yeah. yourself in salt water yep. there's some sort of and I'm with you there must be some sort of there scientific is, thing yeah. behind it and we're not probably you know apt enough to to, yeah. to, to dispel it but um, or to, to, to you know discuss it but um, yeah no I'm 100% with you there's, yeah. there's something to it that just cleanses you yeah you know? and to be able to see the horizon too hey mm, yeah. like you know there's buildings everywhere and just to be able to look out and say right you know that's 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 beautiful. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, that's great. So, so with this whole, you, you talk about like um, when you're up in uh, Marimbula and you, you started doing this healing. You know, healing's a word that has a lot more attached to it behind the scenes. I feel like so. Yeah. Like what 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 do you mean by like what did you were you going through? Yeah. So everything was so fast paced, and my mind in in that world was always focused on the past which in my mind is depression and how it upset my family and hurt people and done the right thing Mm -hmm. or forecasting to the future which is anxiety Mm -hmm. worried about what's coming i was always prepared for the police to kick the door in so i was Mm -hmm. living in hell Mm. depression and anxiety never present and for the first time in marimbula i didn't have to really worry about too much up there and i just sat did a lot of sitting with myself and worked out what I look look like as what did it look like for me to be a human being these mm-hmm. days, mm-hmm. and I did a lot of really heavy work on going through some of the things I'd done and 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 addressing them in, um, internally, mm-hmm. and um, started meditating, which is I mean everybody's doing it now. It was just unheard of back then, and. Mm. And really concentrating on being aware of what I wanted to be as a human being, what did I bring to the table and uh, what were my goals? Mm -hmm. Because I set out to be good in the criminal world and um, if if you never... If you never do any jail, no one does any jail because if you and you make some money, you're a success in that world. Well, tick. Yeah. So I ticked off a thing and now it was no use to me. Mm Mm-hmm. So I had this skill set and I thought I'm going to have to relearn how to be a, a human being again because yeah. what I had and what I'd learned didn't stack up in yeah. normal life. Mm. Some of it some of it's handy. You're probably pretty good with people, I would assume, you know, to 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 be successful in those roles that you talked about. You're probably pretty good at you, you, you said you were good at sales. You effectively, I feel like you may have been like a selling yourself. You know, you probably yeah. had some pretty good people skills that you you may be able to apply. I'd assume. Yep. But yeah, I know what you mean. Like you didn't have any, like you can't put it on a resume. No. You know. <laughs> or you can. Uh, no. You only get many jobs. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. You like yeah. But that would mean I was always intuitive and always been able to. Um, I just love talking to people. Yeah. More more than anything and. And just always very curious. Um, so I knew I had that as a foundation. Mm-hmm. But um, it was really rather than talking, it was time for me to start listening to myself and start listening to other people. Because mm-hmm. some people that genuinely cared about me and had some things to say on how I could improve as a human being. Mm-hmm. Because what I'd done and where I was, I mean, I was at rock bottom. Yeah. At rock bottom, yeah. And, and still... I mean, I was still smoking a lot of marijuana Mm -hmm. at that stage because rather than go on antidepressants or anything, I just thought I'll I'll just let this run its course and um, and then make um, start making a decision to get off that as well. Mm -hmm. But addiction for me, it's like that game at the arcade where you're trying to knock those things and they keep popping up. Whack them on. It's a fucking absolute belter. Yeah. Oh, excuse the pun. Pardon, pardon. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so mine would pop up like I'd knock down drugs and then food would pop up and then knock that down, cigarettes, alcohol, sex. Yeah. Yeah. It was just this war. It was a real war, but um, there was no way I was never not going to win it. Yeah. Because the self belief that I've been born with is unwavering, mm-hmm. and I've tested it. Mm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, it's good. I feel like um, I feel like when you have a personality like that, uh, you know, I'm trying to relate. I, I, I get addicted on one to one thing that all my energy goes to. Yep. And for the last eight eight to ten years, it's been. And it was partying for a while there, and and women has been uh, uh, probably one of my yep. You know, if anyone's ever to say I'm I'm not a good person, I'm a, I'm a shit bloke. 
it might be a woman or two that I've probably, you know, fucked up with in the past and never intentional, but, you know, that's probably... But I think when you get to an age, you know, if you can get through that middle period where everything's just a total shit show, which is like the the (laughs) teens and the 20s, realistically, then you can really function quite well when you've got a personality like that you can kind of zero in on like right what am I going to do that's good yeah you know because for me after it was partying which was probably 25 I was like right what am I going to do you know what am I going to do with myself for the next you know next little while and I entered the fitness industry I was a tradie I entered the fitness industry and I was like right I'm going to be the best fucking coach I can yeah and then everything became zeroing in like because I've got a very I I get bored easily so I need to be doing something so if I'm at home I'll be you know reading an article on how to you know how to increase your back squat reading an article on nutrition side of it or watching a YouTube video going and trying something out going to the gym and talking to people that was my you know my focus I was able to narrow it down and for me it probably it probably changes on like a two or three year cycle yeah you know I went to yeah interesting yeah yeah I go through I go through periods and and it was it was it was it was partying it was real estate partying Partying was a major... Real estate. I bought my first house when I was 19. Yep. Yeah, my dad Phenomenal. helped me. Phenomenal. Yeah, in Frankston. Just, just now, didn't now... That was a good investment. In your neck of the woods, yeah. It's, so ha- had, it's happening now. 100%. Yeah. So it was a, it was a shithole of, of an area. Not shithole, but it, it was never had a very bad name to it. Obviously, Frankston's always had that kind yeah. of like... Um, kind of like St Kilda did 30 years ago. Yeah. And all that, they, they started announcing all this, um, the freeways and all the gentrification of the foreshore and all this, you know, public works. And so I invested in real estate when I was 20, 19 years old. And I actually had three houses by the time I was 22. Wow. That, that, was, that was my thing. Um, but, but I go through periods, so it was like, but, but the middle period of my, like probably late teens to, to mid 20s was like lots and lots of drugs and just tons of partying. Yeah. But, but you know, with a little bit of real estate. But then, then once I started, got through that period, I was tra- I travelled, and then I came back, and I was like, right, fitness industry that lasted its however long till I started Adventure Fit. Then it was like, right, entrepreneurial. You know, I want to be the best entrepreneur I can. So I'm, you know, how do you manage a database? How do you, you know, what what is social media? The best way to write the copy of your blogs, like everything, managing people, you know, whatever. Yeah. And then it got to the point where I'd ridden myself to the ground, into the ground with Adventure Fit trying to make it work and it wasn't my whole thing was work harder and it'll be successful that's yeah. what, what you have to do so I'd work you know I was definitely working you know 80 hour weeks for, for a good while there stuff like that and it just just grinded me into pulp you know and did it, you fall out of love yeah 100% oh, that's yeah. 100% and you know that's what happened tricky. Well, not, you know what happened was I fell out of love with Adventure Fit I fell out of love with my life mm. and I fell out of love with my partner at the time and I pushed her away. Yep. Because at, I wanted to move away. I wanted to go live in South America. That was every day I would think about it. This is only like two and a half years ago. Yep. And then, and but I was like, no, I had no, I didn't want to go back to being a tradie. Everything, all my eggs were in the adventure fit basket. And the easiest thing that I could do was, was push her away, which yeah, right. wasn't the right thing to do. Yep. But I needed to change something because I wasn't happy with where I was with my life. Yeah. But so so that was actually a really tough period. But what happened then? My my focus was like, right, I've just been through the shittest period of my life, similar yep. to what you went through, I suppose. How long did it go for, Bill? Uh went for about probably the last six months of my relationship that I that I was talking about was quite tough. And yep. my partner at the time, she was amazing, super yep. supportive, like she was there for me hundred percent no matter what. And then it came to the head where, where we, we broke up and there was probably a pretty tough six months getting out of that. The yep. first three months, definitely my darkest times. Three months post post relationship yep. was was the worst. And at, and at that point, my focus became right: the human brain, mental health, why we are the way we are, why we act the way we act. I want to fucking understand yeah. what the fuck just happened to me and yeah. how I can stop myself from going through that, or yeah. if I can help others to not go through it. Yep. Learn more about, and that was my my focus. And I, probably for a good good couple of years, really, and. Um, and and I'm glad it was because I've got my best buddy's just been suicidal and he's um he's come through probably now I don't think he's 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 not suicidal anymore and I I don't think he's going to kill himself there was a period there where I thought he was going to yeah um and so that sucked and scary but isn't it very scary and and that actually you know we would be having having a couple of beers or we're actually trying to we were, we were trying to get him off the beers but you know when we would catch up sometimes we'd have beers or we'd be having coffee whatever and I was he'd be picking my brain about about. You know, what is meditation? You know, why do you gratitude journal? What, you know, what do you do? And just, 
when you think this way, how can you control you? And I, I have some skills, which was, you know, priceless skills to, to have forever yeah. now. I've got them. So, so I went through, but, that, but that's how I, that's how I kind of work. You know, yeah. I, I'm able to focus on something and, and I get addicted to it. But now it's luckily that it's not money driven. It's not fucking ego driven. It's not drugs and partying driven. It's, yeah. it's, it's kind of positive. You know, I've grown up. That ability <laughs> to um, hyper focus, I think Benny Cousins talked about it. Um, when it's directed to at something positive, mm. that's like fifths and sixth gear that nobody else has. And yeah. when you when you're able to transform that and use it for something good, you've got a sports uh, a V eight or a sports car that no one else has got. Yeah, that's uh, that's a weapon. Hundred percent. That's a weapon, mate. I hear. You. I hear 100%. loud and clear. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it's interesting. Um, but you have to also I went through a period where with Adventure Fitter interestingly enough I went through a period with Adventure where I probably should have pulled the pin right you know, and my drive was probably I didn't and now we're we're, we're you know a lot more solid we're, we're going well we've done some great things and you know the future's pretty rosy yeah but I had a mentor of mine my business coach and, and I came in one day and and I'd just been getting smashed from pillar to post with nothing going right and, and what have you and Every fortnight we would catch up and I'd come in and this one day I just had the worst results over like three catch-ups in a row and just, just get hammered. And then I came in, I'm like, right, around, grab the marker. I'm like, here's what we're going to do. And I'm fucking writing up all these, you know, sales stats and figures and new fucking whatever. And, and he just starts shaking his head and laughing. He's, he's, uh, and, I'm, and I'm offended. I'm like, what are you, what are you yeah. fucking laughing at? Support me. <laughs> yeah, he's going to work. Yeah. He goes, he just starts giggling. I'm like, what are you laughing at? He goes, mate, I've been business coaching for 25 years. He goes, I've never seen anyone as driven as you. You're, you're unbelievable. Oh, wow, man. You're, you're unbelievable. And I took it as a massive compliment, which it is, but it nearly derailed me financially. I, was ne- I nearly had to go bankrupt. It ended a relationship. This is eventually. Yeah. So, so he said to me, that's not a compliment all the time. Yeah, yeah. Depending on how smart you are and how you use it. Yeah. You know what I mean? He goes, my coach, my role as a business coach is to tell you when to, when to quit. Yeah. And he goes, you need to quit. That's what yeah. he told me. And I said- Fuck you, I'm not going to. Yeah, love it. <laughs> but think about how it went. I lost a relationship that could have been yeah. a forever relationship. Yep. I went through fucking mental turmoil for, for, you know, the worst period I've been through. And I survived and got through the other end and I'm happy now and everything's good. But at the same time, like that hyper-focus, probably like Benny Cousins, like yeah. he had to, with, with him, he had to put... He had to blow off the steam. Yeah. And, you know, we know where that ended and he's gone through some fucking, yeah. some hell of, of his so own. Awful. So, yeah, it is very powerful. So with that, Billy, let me ask, quickly jump in um, with what you're saying about being driven and to use that car analogy again. You can't sit in sixth gear all the way. Mm. And this is what I learned, and I'm mm. sure you did. You push it back to fourth, third, mm. second when mm. you need to and then ramp yeah. up again at the right time. Yeah. But that's experience. No one yeah. tells you that. 100%. I've got sixth gear. I'm going all hard. <laughs> yeah. oh, I've got it. I'm going to yeah. use it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Until you blow the fucking engine up yeah. and you're hitchhiking down the street. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. effectively – because that's what happened to me because I went through a period where for four years I didn't have a holiday and, oh. you know, long oh. periods of like – long periods of, you know – you know, 80 hour weeks and, and, and whatever. And, and I lost all my, I felt like I probably didn't as much as I, as I felt like, but I felt like I lost all my contact with my mates, my close relationship, yeah. you know, and especially yeah. mates on the, per, on the periphery, like you got to really keep those nurture, those relationships because they're not your forever mates, you know, like, so I, lo- yeah. I felt like I just lost all these and, and whatever, but, but I did through, through experience, like you say, I realise that that's not the way forward, you know. Yeah. Hard work is necessary for sure, but uh, a healthy, happy life is more crucial because the decisions you make with an unhappy mind and a, and a fucking, you know, a burnt out, you know, core, you, yeah. they're not going to be good. Yeah. You know? Absolutely, mate. I always try to, I love simplifying it. There's people that roll the dice in life and there's people that watch the people that roll the dice. Mm-hmm. Now, I was always rolling the dice and you can... Get on a losing streak when you're yeah. rolling the dice all the yeah. time. I didn't realise – I thought, oh, I'm the man. I roll the dice and I'm in charge. I didn't realise you could step aside for a little while and just observe, look for trends, see the way yep. things are working, then step back in. Yeah. You know, it's, it's – just, she's a beast. And the one thing I've learned that's that a guy taught me coming back from one of the Into the Wild retreats recently, the theme for me is sometimes, a lot of the time, you've just got to surrender – to mm-hmm. life and say right well show me what's next yeah 
Oh, that's a skill I've only recently yeah. acquired, yeah. man. Because yeah. I was so obsessed. I'm the man. I got this. I'm yeah. rolling the dice. Yeah, I'm going to create everything and everything yeah. around me. You know, I, I'm the author of everything, which you yeah. are. But you, yeah, you, I, I well get said. it. I get it. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm actually at that point right now. I've got lots going on, and I need a need a little break. So, and I and I wouldn't two years ago. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have had that. But I've got a mate's wedding in New Zealand in two weeks. Yep. I'm spending five days. I'm going to go hike. Um, Milford Sound, wow, one of the world's nicest it's hikes. New say. Zealand, yeah, it? yeah, epic. So, so yeah, two years ago, I wouldn't have had the, wouldn't have had the guts to have some time off. You know what I mean? Well said. Mm. Well said. That's made me reflect on it. Yeah, mm. it's that's a good point, Bill. Um, so, so tell me about what you're doing now, then, James. Like you just mentioned, one of yeah. your retreats. Like you, you, your your whole thing is, you know, you, you want to help others. What, what what's that look like for you? Like what's yeah. So we set up hard cuddles. My daughter created the name. Um, my mentor and great teacher is Trevor Hendy, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, I started working with him after a chance meeting at, at the Collingwood Football Club, and instinctively I knew. Back to the salt water again. Mm-hmm. Who was the man in the salt yeah. water? Trevor Hendy. That's his Superman. Greatest, literally Superman. That's his Superman. So, hooked up with him. Uh, he's got a way of tailoring um, s- spiritual awakenings and growth to the individual. He unlocked a few things for me. He's just the most beautiful man. And then he said, James, just start. Mm-hmm. So I did. And we sold all our business interests. We're living a good life, but... Uh, 80 hour weeks and mm-hmm. I got five kids and I wasn't seeing them so and I got fat and bald mm-hmm. now this you can't do sorry the hair I can't do anything about well I'm not going to fight that fight but <laughs> the weight I could so I started yeah. to get myself right created hard cuddles which is basically look I'm a, finishing my diploma of counselling mm-hmm. it's really self belief work with men mm-hmm. um, and getting men to talk one on one do a lot of public speaking mm-hmm. Um, share the story. I wrote the book Hard Cuddles um, and all the profits are going to a charity for that, giving back again. And But my favourite thing is the adventures. So we run a Kokoda tour, mm-hmm. a game fishing tour um, and the Into the Wild retreats where I take men, doesn't matter if you're challenged or you're not, you just want to re-evaluate, yep. up to a special spot called Saltwater. Yeah right. Um, there's just it's abundant with wildlife. Um, we do sp- we spear fishing, fishing, paddle boarding, uh, surfing, yoga, l- meditation. But my version, mm-hmm. creative writing, automatic writing. We do some r- role playing up there, and um, I don't. A lot of a lot of some men that have been away on the camp have said at the end you get really nice messages. And if I was an ego maniac. You know, I'd walk around with the strut and think it's me, but it's not me. It's nature, mm. mate. Mm, it's being yeah. back, no reception, no showers, fire, uh, really good clean food and just being around nature. You realise you're only a speck mm. in the scheme of things. I think that's extremely levelling and for me, I love transforming with the guys. I always learn something new. It's a it's a bloody level playing field when you go with me to one of these. I don't sit there profess to have the answers. Yeah, I learn so much off these blokes. And to watch, I took a guy away. One of the most beautiful blokes in the world just got out of the nick. Um, and on the way there, he had this jail energy on him, fidgety, nervous, and couldn't sit still, couldn't stop talking. Mm-hmm. And I thought to myself, nature's going to smash you right over the head, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so we get out, we get out there. We're, we're at Green Cape um, in New South Wales, f- fishing at this famous rock fishing spot. We nature turned it on. We saw two pods of uh, dolphins, whales breaching. Um, sunlight, sunset was setting, and you could see the contours of the mountain. And we saw a seal, a sea eagle, and I've looked over at old mate. And um, who had the nervous jail energy, and he's sitting there with this biggest smile on his face in another place. Yeah, I was standing with his with his rod on, and with this beautiful dazed look on his face. Yeah. And I said to him after, I said, "You dropped in to yourself." Yeah, and he said, "Yeah, I did, mate." I said, "How amazing is that? Nature did that for you." And I said, yeah. "But you were open to the experience, so." For me, I lo- I've got another one on Monday. Taking a young fella who's um, 
addicted to ice and painkillers and he actually slit his own throat in front of his mum. So Fuck it's been hell. a year. Yeah, it's, well, I'm on the front line, baby. Jesus yeah, Christ. That's so, the most horrific thing I've ever fucking heard. Yeah, very lucky not to bleed out. His mum, oh. his mum's at a she's at a wit's end. So rather Fuck. than spending twenty thirty on rehab that has a average success rate, I know I can I can make this bloke think differently. I can't mm. say I'm going to heal him 100% because he's got a long way to go. Mm. But I offer him hope because now the um, the fellow that I was talking about originally that dropped into himself, he's now an ambassador for Hard Cuddles. Yeah, There's sweet. a role for everyone that comes through the program mm-hmm. and then we um, we rehabilitate that way. But this young bloke, um, he's going to be a real um, challenge, but he's got a good heart yeah, and he's got a good spirit. And... Um, yeah, I've known this kid since he was 15, so that stacks up with young blokes that are fancy themselves as little knockabouts. Mm. But um, I'll, I'll get it done. Um, mate, I bloody don't doubt you will. Um, yeah. So why, why, um, why men? I mean, obviously you are a man. Yep. Um, so it's e- easy to relate. But, uh, but why men and why, why do we... We need it more. Yeah, we we we're fucking killing ourselves by yeah. the droves. Like yeah. Why why men for you and what why 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 are we in the position we are in with this fucking mental health? Yeah, so basically eight, crisis. What are we in? I I think I've lost one a month to suicide this year. One person, that you know, one bloke. Really? Yeah. Now I knew it was bad, and these aren't people I ever got to work with, so I feel yeah. like I missed them. Yeah. Blokes don't talk. Um, you know that. There's a huge stigma and everyone's talking about vulnerability and resilience and mindfulness and you can talk about that till you're blue in the face. Mm. It takes a special skill set to be able to get men to talk mm. and I was born with it. Yeah. Right? This is my thing. Mm-hmm. I'm an incredible listener. I can draw information out. Mm-hmm. Then when you draw the information out, especially with men, it, women I can do it too, but women are good. They're amazing communicators. Yeah. They're nurturing. Have you ever yeah. seen a gaggle of women get together? Jesus. Yeah, yeah you can't get that's a word a, in. That's yeah, an you, don't need to drag, you don't need to drag them out. You can't get in and in. <laughs> <laughs> that's an intimidating <laughs> prospect, that one. But no, men are all good over a few beers and it's, oh, mate, you know, I've, mm. you know, and all that crap. And I remember thinking, I can go there. I used to love drugs and alcohol because you'd get the truth and the D and D yeah. meaningfuls. I can go there anytime. Yeah. It's just that I needed other people to do it mm-hmm. to be able to lo- lower the inhibitions and all that. And then I could just, right, let's, ke- let's keep it real. Yeah. And if they're taking drugs, well, I'm taking drugs because I don't mm-hmm. want to miss out. <laughs> but when I realized that this was what I was meant to be doing, and it took me, I mean, I nearly died trying mm-hmm. to, trying to find out. Um, I realise that men in general just really struggle expressing their emotions. They're getting better. Mm. Um, but I just knew it needed to be done. And, and when I'm, you know, mate, like some horrendous things I've seen with the criminal world and for that reason, guys that have been treated badly and then the pattern just keeps repeating. And I remember thinking, I've got to do something about it. And I knew I can relate to the people especially from the criminal world the commission flats and all these mm. you know young whippersnappers that fancy themselves as tough they're my they're they're my crowd you know like i can really relate to those yeah. people i just i have this ability to get people to talk you've probably got sorry to jump in you've probably got the no. credibility in that in that world as well a little bit you know what i mean a little bit yeah, yeah you only need a little bit but if someone yeah. will take you seriously if you you get someone who's coming up in the wrong on the wrong side of the tracks in the criminal world and you try and sit them down with you know my psychologist is from collingwood daryl he's fucking great but he wears pointy shoes he's got a hipster mustache and he wears a wow. nice shirt like yeah you know what i'm saying is yeah he's probably he's fantastic but yeah. he's probably not going to be able to break through that demographic as well as someone like no. you are you know what i mean no they want to see the ink and they want to see yeah. the scars yeah it's more yeah. real it's the, it's the reason like you say men don't talk about it we my my old host co-host tommy who's in bali now we talked about mental health a lot on this show he's dealt with lots of anxiety stuff myself myself as well and my grandfather killed himself like oh, you know, wow. so a bit of that, bit of that stuff, and and blokes like you and blokes like me and Tommy and and what have you, you know, we're the people that, you know, 
that don't talk about it typically. Yeah. So to hear it from us is, I think it yeah it does help, and that's why with yeah. the criminal stuff and the and the, the the bad upbringing and people that are on the wrong side of the tracks, that's yeah. probably where you come in really, yeah. really, really well. Yeah, that that's definitely my hitting zone. It's branched out. In, you know, women have started to come through the program, mm-hmm. which is amazing. I just keep it real. With my background and, I mean, I'm the world champion when it comes to making mistakes, yep. undisputed. <laughs> yeah. And um, you, you, there's no, there can't be ego, there can't be judgment. Yeah. And people are a lot more intuitive than what they give themselves credit for. They can see that with me, that there is no judgment. I'm, I'm, I've been humbled by mm-hmm. life. And... Um, I think once you're starting with that sort of platform or foundation, people come in and they just start and I just sit there and I'm like, right, let's go and I just start listening and once they've talked themselves out and they've got it all off their chest, which is what I call clearing emotional blockages or Trev does and I've Mm -hmm. just taken it. Yep. um, Then you start working on processes but not all at once. You might do one or two and just see how that rather than like let's leave medication as a last resort. Yeah. For sure. Rather than you go to your GP, mental health plan, six sessions, take this. Yeah. I just – I could have done that. I just wanted to exhaust every avenue. 100%. Before I went there. 100%. And, uh, you know, I got it done. That's good. Mm. Um, before we finish, I want to ask you a couple of rapid-fire questions. But before yep. before that, like one thing I just want to fi- finally touch on, on all this stuff is like, what's the ideal future for you? What's your – what's your in your – you know, where do you want to take this? What would you like to – Say in, in, in 10, 20 years' time, this yeah. is what I've been able to impact on the world. Yeah, so um, good question. There'll probably be a charity arm to mm-hmm. this. Um, just raising awareness that, that, um, that self-belief is imperative to emotional well-being and everybody has a right to feel good about themselves. Mm-hmm. It's just about doing the work on yourself to understand who you are, mm-hmm. then grow. It's... That, that is the message of hard cuddles, um, getting people back to nature, mm-hmm. um, showing everybody that it's it's good to have mentors and good yeah. to have someone to wax lyrical with if you're struggling. Um, I also want to – me and my wife want to create a, a farm, preferably down in Inverloch, that way. Sort of we're thinking 100 acres and just make it about growing your own – this will – please her i'm just got on board with the vegetarian vegan thing Mm -hmm. grow your own food and just make it a real commune a a rehab that's not a rehab you know and and all this stuff that i'm talking about salt water incorporate that and have other like-minded people like yourself come Mm -hmm. down workshops and Mm -hmm. like a hub yeah like a hub exactly like what this beautiful office that i'm Dazzled with, mm-hmm. yeah, something like that. That's that's the big plan. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's a sick plan. That's my wife too. I'm just gonna help her with it. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Mm. Um, all right, James. So before we get you out of here, yep. Um, so normally we have um six from six, three questions from me and three questions Love from it. my to- my co-host. My co-host, uh, no co-host today. Yeah. So I remember my three, and I'm gonna try and remember short the, the, and sharp answers. Short and sharp. Yep. Short and sharp. Ish. Ish. You know. Okay. Um. So my first question is your favourite travel destination you've been um, and why? Sri Lanka, baby. Sri I'm Lanka. half Sri Lankan. Um, mum was born there. My brother's just broken ground on his hotel over there. It's, really? Yeah. It's the first – and we'll do some work over there with hard cuddles as well. It's the first place I've ever been to that's felt like home. Yeah. And obviously with half of my family being Sri Lankan, we go there. I know the culture, the food um, – it was just home, mate, and it's untouched. It's 20 years. This is what Bali was like 30 years ago. Yeah. It's going to go off yeah. and it's going to get – it's going to get – Destroyed. It is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Bal- it, Bali-fied. Yeah, bali <laughs> Yeah, um, the vortex. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there's straight flights there now, 11, uh, 11 hours. They're building highways, the infrastructure's there. It's going to be massive and get there before it goes. The wildlife, the food, the people, it's just – Insane, yeah, epic. I've heard yeah. good things. My little cousin was there for um, surfing. Yeah, yeah, she was at. She was uh She she bought herself a second hand tuk tuk and r- r- drove around the country on her own. What an unbelievable! <laughs> yeah. yeah, she was like twenty two. What a way to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she was just like, hey, hey mate, how much for uh, for that tuk tuk? And he was like, oh. 
you know, two dollars, two dollars. She's like, no, no, I want to buy the tuk tuk. Yeah. And she bought it off him, and then she just uh, threw it around. <laughs> yeah, funny, that, mate. She was doing right like too. Jim Carrey, she was doing, dumb she was dumb doing right. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's awesome. So, um, second question is um, your dream travel destination, top of the bucket list, place you haven't been. Uh, South America. I mm-hmm. want to go to Colombia, mm-hmm. and I want to go to Medellin, where Pablo was from, and I want to see because I've just read so much about it and seen mm. all the... I mean, I read Pablo's stories before Narcos and yeah, all that came out. so did out. I, actually. I just... I have to see the town. I have to see the people and um, travel around there, Peru, Machu Picchu, yeah. all through South America. I've got, yeah. to, I've got to understand it. I've got to feel it and see it. But I don't want to do the Kentucky, the bullshit. I want mm. to go and spend time in places that aren't... Like nut, tourist spots, yeah, and, and immerse myself in the culture. Then mm. Europe, Italy. And my wife's from England. I've got to see England. I can't mm. wait and just mm. be around countries that are old. Mm. Proper um, history. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm with you. I've done all that Pablo stuff actually. Amazing. Yeah, it's good. Saw the roof that he was chased down at and 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 shot and killed. Not that that should be a highlight, but but I did. Yeah. I saw it. Been to his grave. I wonder how many people have snorted a line of coke on that grave yeah. at late at night, you know? Yeah. I was there in the middle of the day, um, so it wasn't as, you know, in a tour, so it wasn't yeah. as, you know, it wasn't as easy to do. Yeah. But um, still got it done. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but it's uh, – Medellin, though, Medellin was obviously pretty much war-torn basically through the 1990s. Yeah. Medellin's the prettiest city. That's what everybody Fucking unbelievable. says. It is in a big valley with yeah. mountains. and We're, All the streets are tree lines, like 22 degrees all day, every day. Definitely the hottest woman I've ever seen, you know. Yeah. I got stopped in my tracks there once. What's that? By, I got stopped in my tracks by, by, a woman. by a woman. I've never had this happen before in my life. This is I still to this day say it's the hottest hottest woman I've ever seen. I was walking into this uh, into this supermarket. There's a smoothie stand out the front, and then there was about um, ten or fifteen meters to the electric doors to get in. Yeah. I remember I had my sunglasses on, and I got a smoothie, and I was like, "Oh, this is fucking great," you know. Walking <laughs> in the supermarket, and then I'm walking along, and then I just went. And I just stopped. And in my mind, for about five seconds, there was just blank. And then in my mind, I was like, you got to keep moving, man. You can't just stand it like that. <laughs> Did you take a knee? <laughs> so I slowly started walking, uh, but got my natural gait back. And uh, You're going to get shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was classic. But Medellin's sick. Oh, you'd love it. South America is my favorite part of the world. Yeah, I yeah, think you, you gotta, triggered you it for me. First, firstly, I just I just want to go there and just see what happens. Yeah, no, you got to get over. It's great. So, um, and then my um, my normal last question is: uh, any book that you like to recommend that you know you really enjoy? It can be a graphic novel, or biography, any sort of book. Hard cuddles, man. Hard cuddles. No, Plenty no, of time no, to plug no, that no, after, no, mate. No, no, <laughs> no, no, not hard cuddles. I'm trying to think. Um, the book that changed my life that I've, I'm reading at the moment is The Celestine Prophecy. That right. book found me. That's insane, that book. Um, the Alchemist. Oh, The Alchemist. I like The Alchemist. Is, it's, a, it's a beautiful book. And The Way of the Peaceful Warrior, mm-hmm. that was a lot. That was a game changer for really? me. Really? I've got that on my yeah. shelf. I've yeah. never read it. Beautiful Dan, book. Dan Miller, yeah. Yeah, I haven't read he it. Writes, he writes well. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Um, and then a couple of questions that would normally be asked that I can't always remember. I know one of them is... Um, um, three people, um, dead or alive, that you would have to dinner and why? Yeah, it'd have to be Muhammad Ali, mm-hmm. number one, Elvis Presley, and Frank Sinatra, the chairman of the board. Oh yeah! Imagine me <laughs> and you <laughs> with those. Oh, I get a gig. Do I? Yeah, I get a gig. Imagine, I'm in the, we're in the kitchen, stand imagine? on the bench. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. those boys would know each other well yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, with the absolute A graders. Yeah, there. and another guy that I loved. Was Charlie Murphy, Eddie Murphy? Oh. Now he would be. Oh, Charlie Murphy, your titties. Charlie Murphy. I saw him live, mate. He was just a, he oh, was insane. He was so good, Charlie Murphy. Yeah. Fuck, what a legend. Yeah, yeah, he was great. Um, mate, I can't remember the other two questions, and we got to get you out of here anyway. So I'll throw this. Uh, so yeah, so uh, it's four from four today. Yeah, but. Um, before we finish, where can people find you? Tell us about Hard Cuddles, where they can find that. Any Anything you want to plug? Yeah, so www.hardcuddles.com. We're on Facebook and Instagram. We're still mastering that. I could probably take some tips off you for mm-hmm. database and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But we're there. I'm always accessible. I've got five kids, so I never sleep. Yeah. And neither does my wife. We're always up. It's nature of the beast and um, always accessible. If you're serious and anybody – is struggling or challenged or just wants to feel better about themselves, hit us up. If I can't help you, my 
itself, I'll direct you um, the right way because through the nature of this, I've met a lot of amazing people and um, I'm happy to give anyone access to them. For sure. Yeah. All right, great. James Harding, mate, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks, Thanks for Phil. coming on the show. No worries, mate. All right, that's a wrap. Discovery Roger, go for deploy.